What's good people, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, please do subscribe down below, smash the like, hit the bell, those things help out a lot. YouTube does notify people about our uploads, so just make sure you hit that bell so you get notified. Anyway guys, today we got a dope episode for y'all, because I know it's something a lot of you guys probably thought about at some point already. And that is, after you harvest, and you chop down your hard work, what are you going to do with this? With this big old root ball. This big old used up root ball that's probably like root bound by now. But that is the multi-million dollar question. A lot of people want to figure out what can I do with my root balls. Because for the most part, a lot of you guys probably just throw it away, right? But there are a few things that you guys can do in those circumstances. And a few things that you guys need to be aware of. So you guys don't wipe out your entire crop from a rookie mistake. <laughs> And I'm going to let you guys know what that is at the end. So definitely stick around till the end to find out what that is. Now before we get into all that guys, we just got to shout out Qualitrips Germination Booster, man. Because if you guys love popping genetics as much as I do, I actually got a bunch of new ones to pop right here. Limited stuff from Humboldt. Shout out to the Humboldt fam. And I don't want to lose any of those beans. So I'm going to hit it that Qualitrips Germination Booster just so that I make sure my germination is guaranteed. And I ain't getting hit with no viruses, funguses, nothing like that. Because a lot of you guys know, seedlings can be super finicky. Even if you just touch it with your bare finger that can lead to stuff getting on there that can be harmful to that little seedling remember it's just a baby seedling it needs every chance at life so definitely give that quality of germination booster a try hit that discount code i can thc and snag a discount on everything on their website guys you know i got you guys covered now without further ado let's get into today's episode Yes, guys, so I've harvested my plant, and I'm wondering now, what am I going to do with these roots? Bruh. I had a big cherry paloma in this baby, and the roots are just as big, so what am I going to do with these roots? For the most part, a lot of people just throw them away, and I've done that a lot of times before. I just take the root ball out and toss it outside. I've actually got like 50 root balls probably in the back of my house right now. It is what it is. But there are a few things that you guys can do in those circumstances which will help you out a lot. And just help the environment out a lot. Perfect. Now the biggest and most popular one is composting. If the roots are healthy and free from diseases and pests, then they can definitely be composted. 100% fam. Just chop them up into smaller pieces. That'll facilitate the decomposition a little bit quicker. Just like with anything in a compost bin. Chop it up into smaller pieces, it'll decompose a lot quicker, break down faster. A bigger piece will take a longer time to break down. Once that's done, add it to your compost pile or your bin and you're good to go. Now, if those roots show signs of disease or pest guys, it's probably not a good idea to compost. You probably want to dispose of them thoughtfully in that case. You can probably toss them in the bin, throw them in a garbage bag, tie it up, and throw them in the trash just to prevent the spread of any potential issue. Another pro tip that I like to do, which some organic gardeners may not agree with, especially you no-till guys, I will literally take the whole root ball out, shake it all out, and get some of that loose dirt out of there. But that's only if things are looking healthy. Again, if it's not healthy, you gotta get rid of it. But personally, I have no problem reusing my soil. Some folks prefer to recycle their soil by removing the root ball, breaking it apart, and reusing the soil for future growth, and that can absolutely be done if the soil is still in good condition and not depleted of nutrients. If it is depleted of nutrients, you may need to re-amend just to give it another lease of life. But there are folks out there who don't like that method at all. I just mentioned no-till. Some of those people have a massive bed and they'll just chop and plant right next to it. And that's fine as well. There's a lot of different ways that you guys can get it in. Oh, monetize. Oh god, that was crazy. <laughs> anyway guys, another pro tip is to clean and sterilize your containers. If you're reusing containers, pots and stuff like that, then you gotta make sure to clean and sterilize them thoroughly to prevent any pathogens or pests from lingering and affecting your future growth. Now I don't think I know anyone who does not reuse their plant pots, I reuse mine all the time, but you gotta make sure to clean it. And on the topic of cleaning, if you're using the same grow space for different crops, removing the old roots and thoroughly cleaning the area can prevent any carryover of diseases and pests into the next crop. Especially if you guys are doing like perpetual runs and stuff like that, and you have one plant that has a fungus on a root, you take it out of the plant pot, don't clean it. But, but apart from another plant into that, then you can end in a cycle, a perpetual cycle of just disease and bacteria and pests and germs and it's not good. And lastly guys, you do want to inspect for pests and any issues. That's the first thing and that's the last thing. While you're handling those roots, check them for any signs of pests and disease. I always get in there with my fingers so I know what's going on. If you notice any issues, you might want to take appropriate steps to prevent that spread, such as using insecticidal soap 
or treating the area before growing again. Now all that said, handling the roots after harvest does involve a balance between recycling the organic matter, preventing the spread of disease or pests, and preparing your space for a future run. And that specific approach can vary depending on the individual gardening practices that you have, your setup, and the condition of, of course, the roots and the soil. Now when I lived out in the Caribbean, I also had homies who would literally use those roots to make root tea. Yep, you heard that right, root tea. Yeah man, I got some of that root tea they dog. Yeah man. Personally, I'm not a fan of the root tea, but I do like ginger tea. I also had homies who would literally make tea out of fan leaves. Now some people actually even add the roots to their medium just to improve soil aeration. It slowly breaks down over time, but it does improve aeration within that medium. As those roots decompose, they create channels that improve the soil structure and allow air and water to penetrate and move more efficiently. Now if you're running in those no-till beds, a lot of people like to leave those roots in there because it creates a habitat for microorganisms. Decaying roots create a conducive environment for beneficial microbes, fungi, and earthworms. And all that enhances soil health and fertility. Now if you got some extra root balls laying around, you can also chop it up, shred it up, and use it as mulch. I'm sure a lot of you guys know what mulch is, and you guys can probably go down by the garden store and buy a bag of mulch. But if you got access to roots home, chop it up and use it as mulch. It will literally help to retain moisture, suppress some of that weed growth, and gradually release nutrients into the soil as it decomposes. Now taking it out of the realm of gardening, if you're a super artsy and creative type of person, you can use it for crafts and art. Dyed and treated roots can be used in craft projects, sculptures, or natural artwork due to their unique shapes and textures. And I've even seen certain plant roots that contain natural pigments that can be used to create dyes for textiles and crafts and stuff like that. So all that said, do you guys reuse your roots? Drop it in the comments down below and let me know. Do you just throw them away? Do you make teas? Do you make herbal stuff? Like, drop it in the comments and let me know. I'm always interested to find out what you guys gotta say. And don't forget, if you guys want some of that fire genetics, definitely join up with the ICANN VIP Bean Club. Mailboxes are always burning down. Trust me, fam. And you guys don't want to miss out on any of those drops. So hit that link in the description below and join up with the fam. And if you guys want to learn more about growing that fire, then definitely check out any episode on screen right now, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace, fam.